This video is going to talk now about line charts and area charts and some of the issues we run into when we play with this kind of work. So if you look at my Excel example here, you'll see I have a similar kind of data. I've got three different products, I've got five different rounds, and then profit by round inside of there. When I scroll down at the line charts, you actually see a really similar idea to what you had with our bar charts. There's really six different ways I can do this line chart. So again, to do a line chart, you do your selection box over the data that you want to show, go to insert, and then choose your line. The three basic kinds are you have clustered, where the lines start from the bottom of the screen, stacked, where each line is on top of the other, and stacked 100%, where it maximizes the overall thing. The problem with this is that you can't really tell with line charts which is which. So let's look at an example. So if I look at the data that I have here, in the basic clustered line chart version, you'll see a chart that looks like this. So I see that red up here, which is my blight, start has a value of 200, green has a value of zero, blue has a value of zero, and so forth. This one you're reading from the bottom all the way up. The problem is if you stack these. If you stack these charts, what you'll see is something like this. This looks visually really similar to the other, but the data values are totally different. Now, instead of seeing that I have green and blue at 50 and red at 200, now I've got blue at 50, red at 250, and green at 300. So what's going on here? What's happening is that Excel is starting blue at the very bottom and going from the very bottom to here. Then instead of starting red at the bottom, it's starting it on the blue line. So the difference between the blue and the red is the value of red, rather than all the way to the bottom. Same thing for green. As we saw a second ago, the green one really has a value of 50. It should be on the bottom. But instead, it's actually stacking on top of the red bar. So now, it looks like it's 300. So this is the problem with a stacked chart. You can't really look at this and tell if it's a stacked chart or not without some kind of data labels. You have to just sort of know if you see a chart without lines crossing, it's very possible the person messed up when they created it and they did a stacked line chart instead of a clustered line chart. We also have a similar issue with stacked 100%. So with stacked 100%, you can see the axis on the left changes. It's no longer an absolute dollar figure like it is over here. Instead, it's a percentage. So now the green line goes all the way to 100%, the red line goes from here to here, and the blue line goes from here to here. So it's really tricky to use this kind of chart, and frankly, I don't know why Excel includes it as an option, because it's really confusing, and I think on the edge of misleading for almost all the cases you use it. Now one of the things you can see in here that makes it even more fun, if you're looking at how people can use a chart to confuse you, if you go to the select data option under your chart design ribbon, you'll see you actually have the option to say which line goes first. So right now they're going A, B, and C, but I can actually take C and put it on top by clicking the buttons here. Now if you're on a PC it looks a little bit different, but you have the same basic idea as you, what you have on my Mac. Now if I come back and look at the stack chart, you'll see that sorry my screen is having issues refreshing, you'll see that now green goes first to here to here, blue goes second from here to here, and now red looks like it's at 300. So this type of stack chart is just really confusing to people. Now just like I do with bar charts, I can change the, the, the rows and columns. So if you look at the chart design ribbon, and there's a switch row column button, I can click that and change the organization. Right now, each line represents a product. So I can see blue is apple, red is blight, green is cats. If I click switch row column, you'll see that it flips. Now, apple is one series of points, and each round is a line. Blight are all here, cat are all here. So again, this would be really confusing if you have our data organized the wrong way. If it's not natural, though, so come up here and click the switch row column, and it should put it back in the right direction. Now you can see the same charts as we have above. This is a clustered chart, but it has the row and columns twisted. Same thing for this one here. This is a stacked line chart with the rows and columns swapped. And the last one is a stacked 100% chart with, again, the rows and columns swapped. So this is why it's important to understand the six kinds of charts. 
Excel won't stop you from using the wrong kind of chart. You just have to kind of know if it's the right one or not. Now that I've done this, go ahead and let's look at area charts. So area charts are really similar to a line chart, except for one key difference. The difference is that now, in addition to having a line, it fills in the area below it. Now here's the problem with an area chart. Just like there are six different kinds of lines, there are six different kinds of areas. So if you look at the one I have here, this one is an area chart that is clustered. So if I look at my chart type, you can see that I have all the different options in here. Under the 2D area, this first one, this is clustered, this is stacked, and this is stacked 100%. It doesn't say the word clustered, but it's basically using the same idea as before. The problem with this is that because you have the area filled in, you can't see all the data. So if I look at this data right here, you might think that red's value goes from this point to this point right here, and that's it. Unfortunately, you'd be wrong. If I click on the red data series, you can see it highlight, and you'll see actually red goes all the way to the bottom here. So red's value is 200 because it goes from here to here. You also can't see the red data series behind the green here or behind the green there. Same thing for blue. Blue has data, but you just can't see it because it's hiding behind the other data series. And over here, you might see a little bit of blue, but really there's actually should be a lot of blue displaying, but it's just hidden by the green one in front of this. I can show you how this will modify by changing the order. If I go up to Cam Chart Design and select Data, I can change which one shows in front, Apple, Blight, or Cats. Let's take Cats and put that one all the way up on top. Now when I scroll down to get the charts again, you'll see that now the red one's in front and now the green one's behind. So now I can't see that the green has a value here. I can see it a little tiny bit here, but then it gets hidden behind the rest of this. So in general, whenever you have clustered area charts, it's just a bad idea. You shouldn't use them because you can't see the data. Now the right way to use this is with a stack. So in this chart, this is actually correct. It shows that for blue, I have $150 here. I have $200 for red and I have $50 for green. And so as I look at each color, you can see, oh, this is the area for that particular thing. Now that being said, a lot of people will still confuse this chart. And if you ask them, well, what's, what's the value of green sales for round two? A lot of them will say 500 because that's the line that matches up to it. So you have to still be careful with area charts that you have really, really clear expectations or communications with your audience so they don't misinterpret it. Now, just like the other ones, we also have a stacked 100%. So this chart is great for showing relative proportion, but it can be kind of confusing if your audience doesn't understand how it's working. So basically, it's stacking the data like it is before, but I'm stretching out each point now. So this is hiding a little bit of information. With this one here, I'm showing the total volume of sales in round one, round two, round three, and round four. And you can see that round two has more sales than round one does. But sometimes I don't really want to see that. I just want to know the percentage of each product and ignore the total sales. If that's what you want to do, this is the right chart for it. This one hides the total value for each round. Instead, it's just showing the percentage each product makes up of the total value. The tricky part with this is you really can't compare the absolute sales of anything from one round to another round. So if I look at round four and round five, it looks pretty flat. It looks like my sales haven't changed for blue. But in reality, they have. Blue sales have gone down. It's just that everything has gone down. So blue sales have gone down as an absolute value here. And over here, they're actually still maintaining the percentage. They're selling the same amount as they were before but this chart hides the fact that the market's gone down. So it's not necessarily bad or evil to do that, but you have to just know what you're doing with it. Just like the other charts, we can also switch the rows and the columns. So if I come down here to the next set, you can see that in this one, this is a clustered one, and on top, we're organizing them by round with the axis and by product with the legend. Now at type B, we're organizing it by product on the axis and round with a legend. So again, it kind of depends on your data. You might want to do one or the other based on what you're trying to show or what makes sense. 
But in general, I say again, don't use a clustered area chart. It's just misleading and you can't see the data. Now this is a stacked version reorganized. So we have up here type C. So this is a stacked version. But now this one shows by rounds as the axis. This one shows by products as the axis. And similarly, on our last option here, we'll see type F. This is a stacked 100%, but just organized by product and not by round. So that's an example of charts. Go ahead and take a minute and see if you can recreate all of these charts on your own.